Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Geeks 2. And of course, welcome back to Horror Stew. So you're probably wondering, guys, what what is I going to talk about today? And actually, I'm going to return to my roots here, and we're going to talk about an underrated horror film. Now, I guess it depends on your definition of underrated, but I don't really see a lot of people having seen this movie. Um, so that's why I wanted to talk about it. Um, and apologies for that. <clears throat> throat got a little phlegmy but that being said guys for today guys we're going to talk about train to busan and i do apologize if i you know mispronounce that but this is a 2016 south korean action horror film train to busan So if you've never seen Train to Busan, you're probably wondering, uh, what is it? Um, I mentioned it was a South Korean film um, and everything else. And basically, long story short, it's a zombie film on a train. Um, if I had to very uh, distinctly and very um, concisely uh, give you a, a description of the film. Um, and specifically, guys, there, you know, there are a lot of great zombie horror films out there. And I think I even mentioned in previous uh, episodes of Horror Stew when I talk about zombie films that Train to Busan is a, a, a quality film. Um, Train to Busan, in my opinion, is probably the greatest, if, if not one of the greatest, um, modern zombie horror films, um, especially for a saturated market of zombie horror films. You know, we, we probably see a few zombie films every year that comes out. Nowadays, typically they're coming out um, from the perspective of a B or a lesser uh, horror movie. You know, they're very low budget, typically cheesy, typically campy, which is all fine and dandy. I, I don't mind that one bit. Um, but Train to Busan was a little bit different. It was definitely a more serious take on a zombie horror film. And this obviously came from the, uh, the South Korean studio. Um, this was directed by a young Sang Ho and it starred, uh, Gong Yu, uh, Jung Yu Mi and Mong Dong Suk. Uh, I hope I pronounced this correctly. I really tried. <laughs> um, and I actually looked up how to pronounce these, so I'm pretty sure I got them right. Um, but I do apologize if I did not say so. Um, but this film is a, mostly takes place, and this is kind of a description, guys, but it mostly takes place on a train to Busan as a zombie apocalypse suddenly breaks out in the country and threatens the safety of the passengers. Um, this is actually a film that appeared on the 2016 Cannes Film Festival on May 13th. Um, and then on the August 7th, the film saw the record is the first Korean film in, uh, film of 2016 to break the audience record of over 10 million theater goers. So super, super, super cool. Um, and I will say before we get to move on too far is that there was a sequel film called Peninsula. I've not watched that yet, but I've heard it's very good. Um, and, but yeah. So that being said, guys, let's get into this. Let's talk about um, Train to Busan. And I specifically want to talk about a couple of things that the film to me really it just blew me out of the water and made the film so much better. So let's get into the first thing here. So of course, like I mentioned, zombies have saturated the market for so long and there's so many different zombie movies. I'm not even going to begin to start to name them. You know, um, I, one of my first videos on the channel was talking about why um, Night of the Living Dead is the most important zombie movie of all time, which I still stand by. Um, but when I was looking at this movie, it kind of made me realize that all zombie movies are going to be considered derivative because you could always say, well, these zombies are like these zombies. But Train to Busan does something a little bit different. Um, I will say that Train to Busan, I, I would say, mirrors um, something more akin to a World War Z zombie or a uh, 28 Days Later zombie. Once bitten, your the infection process is very fast. Um, this is seen a couple of times throughout the film that when a person gets bitten, it's only a matter of minutes. Now, obviously, 28 days later, zombies, it's like a matter of seconds. But World War Z zombies, it's, it's, it's a pretty quick infection process if not properly taken care of. Now, obviously, in the Train to Busan, um, and this is something we'll get into a little bit, but their materials are very, they're very limited in their materials. You know, what they can use to survive because they're on a train. Um, but something that I noticed in this film was that even though basically you, the, the infection is so quick, you know, they, they take the proper precautions. Um, but before we get to that, the zombies themselves, the zombies themselves are, they're kind of blind. They're, they, they, they have to be, have direct, um, some kind of light to be able to see 
properly if they don't have light um, and this is something that we see in the film is that if they don't have light the uh, survivors can actually sneak past them um, and being able to sneak past the zombies is a very important um, a very important measure to take uh, typically in zombie films the zombies are very keen to their senses um, and they can typically see smell and whatever else obviously depending on the variation of the zombie um, the train to Busan definitely takes the the path less traveled where these zombies for all intents and purposes are very dumb they're 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 living on their most basic instinct which is I see it I bite it um, honestly it kind of even reminds me a little bit of last of us zombies with the the cordyceps infection whereas there there are obviously some zombies that can hear very well uh, but mostly the the zombies specifically rely on sight and visual presence um, and the train to Busan zombies do that specifically. You know, they, they have to see to do anything, right? They have to see it, and if they see it, they attack it. Um, and then, of course, the train to Busan zombies, they, they offer a very unique take because, like I said, you know, most zombies have either a long infection period or a very quick infection period. And obviously, this is a very quick infection period, but they there is, like, this um, possibility of them um, being able to not necessarily fight the infection, but basically it, it almost, there's a scene and I, I'll, I'll hopefully I'll be able to put it here, but there's a scene where one of the main uh, characters of the film, um, got bit and they're trying to hold back the zombies as long as possible for the rest of them to escape. And you can even see from this guy that he is fighting the infection, like the infection, he's barely able to fight it. Um, but he's fighting it as long as he can. So that way he isn't being overtaken. So that way he can let the others escape. Um, in addition to that, I mean, the zombies are just very unique, right? They're, they're very quick moving. They're very, uh, cumbersome, right? They fall over each other. Um, there's a lot of great scenes in this film about that. Um, uh, but, uh, enough about the zombies. We're going to move on to another aspect of the film that really just blew me out of the water. The second thing about this film that really just made me love it so much was the simplicity, right? The movie didn't really have any complex um, dynamics like, you know, oh, you know, we have to get all these guns, you know, we have to, you know, fight off the zombies, we have to, you know, blow them up with C4, or, you know, it was an action movie, but it wasn't over-the-top stupid action. Basically, the premise of the movie is, is that this train needs to go from point A to point B, and hopefully we get to point B. Um, and that's exactly what we, what we see happen, is, you know, the train to Busan goes from point A to point B. Um, you know, and, and obviously the film, there's, there's some hiccups along the way. And then obviously there's other, other aspects of it that, you know, don't necessarily end up, uh, quite right, but you know, what can you expect? But that being said, you know, it, it has a simplistic take where it's on, it's basically zombies on a train and I would love to see, and I, I this, and let me preface this by saying that nothing will top the original okay train to busan is probably one of the best movies i've ever seen much less one of the best zombie movies i've ever seen um and it's it, it isn't it isn't korean and please do not watch the dub the dub is horrible uh, <laughs> um i'm usually not i'm usually i don't really care that much about sub versus dub uh but when it comes to live action movies it clearly they don't match up their lips but one of the greatest things about this is that i i could i i they they do like the train to busan presents peninsula i would love to see like train to busan presents like what happened in the americas um and maybe have some uh, visionary directors take a look at it here but beyond that of course the simplicity of this film is mind-blowing and compared to other films you know a lot of other zombie films really look at the complex and this really just boils it down to the bare nitty gritty but i won't sit on that too long let's move on to my last point so my third and most probably most important point is that when you look at the train to busan the the, the story itself is very simple it doesn't have it doesn't need a complexity of the story you know the, the storyline doesn't need to have this you know crazy you know twist and turns at every single thing and obviously there are twists and turns don't get me wrong uh, there are definitely some major twists and turns that occur, uh, but Train to Busan, the story itself is very simple. There, it's not a crazy, you know, knock down, drag out, you know, story where, you know, basically we start, we start with this really complex plan and get to plan, you know, this, but, it, you know, it starts with that simple point A to point B. 
But the thing that really brings it home for me is that the characters themselves are very complex. You know, we this, the movie starts with a story of a father and a daughter, right? The daughter is, for lack of a better phrase, the daughter, you know, they, they have, they're very disconnected because the father works a lot. Um, and, you know, and the father, you know, wants to try and connect with his daughter, but the daughter wants to, um, you know, reconnect with her mother. And that's part of the reason why they're on the train to begin with. So you see this very complex dialogue between a father and a daughter that really drives the story. You know, essentially the story is about this father doing anything in his power to protect his daughter, right? You know, regardless of anybody else. But of course, when he's on the train, you know, he starts to learn over time that, you know, you cannot be selfish, that yes, you need to protect your daughter, but other people matter as well. And you see this character progression of the main character with his daughter, but you also see character progressions of the other people on the train, right? They start off hating the guy they, the because the, he's a businessman. Uh, they start off hating him because of some of the things that he does and some of the ways he acts. Um, but even though, you know, they sort of dislike him in that fashion, you know, people grow on him, right? He, they start to like him because, you know, despite everything else, he's still very tough. He's still very you know, very active and he can do anything that he needs to do to get the job done. Um, and even beyond that, the other characters, they evolve as well. You know, there's a pregnant couple on the, on there as well. Um, and the, the dynamic that they bring to this and the dire nature of the situation really, really pushes the narrative. Um, and as well as that, there is also a, a group of baseball players as well as some other folks. And honestly, it just, it, it's a, it's a mind blowing how I can remember all these characters because of how interesting and unique they are. Um, but that being said, the biggest thing to take away from this is that the complexity of the characters drives the story because the, the, the complexity of the characters is the story, right? The, the characters themselves is the reason why the movie is good because there is a simple, and I don't even want to say that it's not dynamic, but there's a very simple um, uh, and unique story that's being driven by these very unique characters. So that being said, we're going to move into final thoughts, guys, because I love Train to Busan. I want to give a couple final insights uh, before we get out of here. So let's do it. Final thoughts. So final thoughts, guys. Whew. Train to Busan is probably, I mean, I've said it once, I'll say it again, probably the best modern zombie horror film that I've ever seen. Um, there are a lot of zombie films in the modern age, and there are a lot of, you know, <laughs> honestly, really shitty zombie movies. And I, I definitely think that it's not, uh, it's no coincidence that the, the quality of zombie films have gone downhill so much because I feel like there are a handful of series that kind of corner the market on serious zombie films, and um, definitely everything else just kind of pales in comparison. You know, and obviously there have been some standout, you know, movies over the years, Shaun of the Dead, a lot of the George Romero movies, um, Train to Busan, World War Z, uh, amongst others. And, you know, but especially in the modern age, in the last 10 years or so, there are really not that many zombie films that pop out to me other than a few of like the your World War Zs, you know, and things of that nature, maybe Zombieland. Um but it's very interesting to see a very serious take on zombies because it, sometimes it feels like you're not seeing serious zombies you're seeing comedic zombies or you're seeing b-rated zombies um so you know train to boost on it to me at least provides a very unique uh perspective and pushes a very unique dialogue that we don't really see as much with other zombie films um, and this, of course, could be because of, you know, that, you know, the South Korean action film, horror film market. I don't know. Maybe there's a, more of a, a request over there for that. Maybe that that's not something that's high in demand here, but it's more high in demand over there. But regardless, they made this movie. And to me, it is just mind blowing. So that being said, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, I want you guys to go ahead and leave a comment down below. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe. Um, follow us on social media. Social media is in the description as well as at the end of the video. And if you want to see more content like this, let us know. If there, what, let us know what content you, you want to see. 
Um, even then, uh, if you guys want to join the crew, I mentioned this a little bit in every video, but if you want to join the crew, we're always looking for new people to make new content on the channel. So hit us up on Twitter or leave your uh, information in the inf inf uh, description down below and I will reach out to you via Twitter. Um, but yes, guys, let us know if you want to become part of the Geek Stew team team because we're always looking for people to join. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. So stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy, and keep on growing. We will see you in the next one. See ya.